Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is determine the winner of a ball in game. In this question, we are given a two integer arrays, player one and player two, where each element inside those arrays represent the number of pins the player has hit in a bowling game. So the game consists of n turns, which is the length of the two arrays. So the two arrays will be having the same length n. And the maximum score you can get is 10 because there are 10 pins in each turn. So how many pins you manage to hit that will be your respective score in that turn. So there are two conditions to calculate the score in each turn. If the player has hit all the 10 pins in one turn, then we double the score for the next two turns. Else if he has hit any score between 0 to 9, then that number will be his score in that turn. Only if he manages to hit 10 pins, the score in his next two turns will be doubled. And our task is to calculate the score of each player after n turns. And then we have to compare the score of the two players. If the score of the player 1 is greater than the score of player 2, then we return 1 as the output. If the score of player 2 is more than score of player 1, then we return 2 as the output. If it is a draw, then we return 0 as the output. Now let's take a look at this example and see how we are getting the output. I've taken the same example given to us. This is the P1 array and this is the P2 array representing the scores of the two players. Now we have to calculate the scores of these two players P1 and P2. Since the process for calculating the scores for the two arrays is same, so you can write a general function which will apply to calculate the score for the both the arrays. So let's write a general function which will iterate through any array and calculates its score. We are accessing the elements from left to right starting from 0 till the last index. Now we have to check for specific indexes. If you are at the second element, you have to check only one index to its left if it is a 10 or not. And for indexes greater than 1, so these two in this example. So for example, if you are accessing this element, you have to check if this is a 10 and also you have to check if this is a 10. If either of them is a 10, you have to double its score. If you are accessing this element, you have to check if its previous element is a 10 or if second previous element is a 10. If either of them are 10, you have to double the current score. So we use if statements to check for specific indexes. If i is equal to 1, you write one logic. If i is greater than 1, which means the rest of the indexes, you write one logic. And in the else part, if i is equal to 0, which stands for the first element, then you write one logic. So you use three statements. So let's start with if i is equal to 1, this index. So we access the element here and we are checking only if its previous element to its left, only one element to its left, if that is a 10, no that is not a 10 and we declare a variable score which will calculate the score of the array which will be initially 0. So in this case we are checking the previous element is not 10 so we don't double the score, we access the score as it is so 10 will be added to the score. If this was a 10 then this will be doubled and 20 will be added but here it is 4, I am just showing you if that was a 10. Now we have calculated for the first index. Now we have to check for this case if i is greater than 1. So the index is 0 until the end of the array. So the index is 2 until the end of the array. So here in this case 2 and 3, this logic will be applied. So if we are at 2, we are going to check its previous element, also its second previous element. If either of them are 10, we double the score. Its previous element is a 10, so we double the score. So score was initially 10, 10 plus 2 into current element is 7. Now we go for the next element. Next element i is equal to 3. We are checking its previous element and also its second previous element. If either of them are true, we double the score. Its second previous element is a 10, so we double the score. So 2 into current element is 9, so 2 into 9. In this case, we satisfied these two indices and in the else block, it means i is equal to 0. So i is equal to 0 stands for the first element always. As that is the first element, there is nothing to check to its left. So whatever is present inside the first element will be added to score. So 4 is the first element, so it will be added as it is. Now we calculate the entire score. So the entire score is equal to 46. So this is the P1 score. Now we do the same and calculate P2 score the same way by applying these three conditions. So when you calculate P2, you will get the score as 16. Now P1 score is equal to 46 and P2 score is equal to 16. Since P1 score is greater than P2, so you return 1 as the output and if for other test cases if you get p2 greater than p1 you return 2 if p1 equal to p2 you return 0 but in this case p1 is greater than p2 so you return 1 as the output now let's implement these steps in a java program coming to the function given to us this is the function and this is the function name and these are the two integer arrays player 1 and player 2 
given to us and the return type is an integer so we have to return either 1 2 or 0 as the output so to calculate the score i've written a general function called count score where it will calculate the score of an array and it will return an integer representing the score and then i'm calling this count score function for each player so player 1 score will be counted and stored inside this variable and player 2 score will be counted and stored inside this variable and then we can do our comparisons to return either 1, 2 or 0. Now let's take a look at the helper function. So I've written the function count score and this is the integer array and the return type is an integer. So I'm declaring a variable score to calculate the score of this array. Now I'm iterating through the array from start to end. I will start from 0 until the end of the array. Now we have to be careful about out of bounds accessing the second element. So if we are accessing this element, we have to compare only one previous element, right? We can't do two previous elements, then it will go out of bounds for the second previous element. So specifically, if i is equal to one, which means the second element inside the array, then we only check if its previous element one to its left is a 10 or not. If it is a 10, then we have to double the current scores. i minus one is this element. This is not equal to 10. So this condition won't be satisfied. So the else block will be executed. Whatever is present inside this will be added into the score. And now for other indexes where i is greater than one, i is greater than one will be this part of the array. Then we have to check for two previous elements. So I'm checking here if the element to its left is equal to 10. So if i is equal to 2, I'm checking if this is a 10 or i minus 2 is a 10. i is this, i minus 2 will be this. So I'm checking if this is a 10. So if either of those two elements are 10s, then I have to double the current score. So I'm doubling the current and adding it into the total score. So 2 into 7 will give you 14. So 14 will be added to the score. And in the else block, which means if i is equal to 2 and if either of the two elements are not tens, then we simply add the current value 7 into the score and I'm adding that element into the score. So this is for i is greater than 1. So in the else block, it means you're checking for the first element. The first element, you don't have to check its previous values because there is no previous values. So you add that element's value directly into score. And inside this for loop, it will check for all the elements inside the array. And finally, outside the for loop, I'm returning score as the output. So score will be returned for this function. And I'm calling this function to calculate the player one score, storing it inside P1 score. Again, I'm calling the same function to calculate player two score and storing it inside the variable P2 score. Now I'm calculating the three conditions what to return. We return one when P1 score is greater than P2 score. We return two if P1 score is less than P2 score which means p2 score is greater than p1 score. So we return 2. And if these two conditions fail, it means p1 score is equal to p2 score. So it is a draw. So we return 0 as the output. So I'm returning 0 if those two conditions don't satisfy. Now let's try to run the code. The test cases are accepted. Let's submit the code. And our solution has been accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n because I'm accessing all the elements inside the array at least once. And the space complexity is O of 1 constant space because I'm not using any extra space to calculate the output except simple variables. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.